Ahead on early birds, the Falcons have had their fill of Starbucks. Turn down the Nirvana. It's time to cap a week in Seattle with a win over the Seahawks. We'll break it down and rev our engines with Atlanta's big man who's picking up speed. Plus, an eye-opening, eardrum-shattering visit to a military base you've got to see. That and much more ahead on Early Birds. Grab a cup of your favorite Joe and let's talk Falcons football on Early Birds. Presented by Mercedes-Benz. Good morning and welcome into a transcontinental edition of Early Birds. we got DJ Shockley back in Atlanta. I'm with the Falcons here in Seattle. And let's kick things off with the opening drive. And Shock, we got the Falcons and the Seahawks tomorrow afternoon right here on Fox 5. And we'll start things off with where I am right now, Seattle. The Falcons have spent the entire week here. They actually made the trip up to Washington State right after the game against the Rams in L.A. And I'll tell you, they've been practicing all week at the University of Washington. Washington and my ears are still ringing. They were cranking Pearl Jam, <laughs> getting ready for the 12th man. And hey, Shock, nothing like a road trip to bring everybody together, right? Yeah, no doubt. And it's happening early in the season, too, because there's a lot of new faces on mm -hmm. this team. So it takes time to get to know each other, not just on the field, but off the field as well. They got dinners, they got playing cars, they can visit each other in their rooms. No, no kids, no, you know, families to worry about. So this is a great bonding time for all these guys, and hopefully it translates onto the field. Yeah, shock everybody else is remote working. The Falcons hoping it works for them. There's a lot of benefits, especially early in the season. Uh, I think it's, you know, kind of where we're at. The timing couldn't be better. Went out to eat, went, did a little shopping, seen a few views. So, but yeah, uh, coach gave us the opportunity, you know, to continue to bond as a group. A lot of guys, their families are back home. You know, you're going out to dinner, you're hanging out. A change in scenery, a change in routine. I think guys kind of have to adjust and being able to do that all together, I think is where that is going to build that chemistry that we need. As we continue on the opening drive, finish, finish, finish. Two close losses in the first two games of the season for the Falcons. They happen in different ways, though. The common denominator, a chance to win at the end that just falls short. So, DJ, what do you see similarities in these two losses? You know what, I, I think it comes down to, you mentioned some things that happen at the end of the ball game. I think it's turnovers, but also execution. The guys are not finishing off what they think what should be good plays or bad plays and not finishing the right way. And turning the ball over is always a big deal, especially in the ball game, gives the team the extra confidence going forward. So you have to make sure you do that and then play together and execute when no times matter. And Marcus Mariota is optimistic that the script is ready to change for the Falcons in these close games. We do our best to simulate it out here. I, I think when we put ourselves in practice situations that are tough, I think when we get to the game, guys feel very comfortable in the situation. So it's just continuing to line up and do those things. Repetitions, I think, is the mother of learning. And when we're able to do that, guys will feel comfortable when those, those points will come. And as we wrap up the opening drive, it's time to let Gino Cook, yeah, for the first time in a decade, it's not going to be Russell Wilson under center for the Seahawks. It's Geno Smith now. Russ, of course, sent to Denver in the offseason. Geno Smith off to a pretty good start. He's completing 80% or so of his passes. Mostly short game, though, Shock. So what have you seen out of the Seattle quarterback? Yeah, that's kind of been his MO is he wants to take care of the football, give his offense, give his team a chance to win the ball game. He's only thrown one interception in 58 attempts. So that tells you he's careful with it. He's very methodical about how he runs this offense. So it's going to be interesting to see if the Falcons can, one, get to him, but also rattle him because Geno doesn't take many mistakes. And this is his kind of second opportunity to be the guy here. So he's going to be excited and make sure he does that the right way. Yeah, both teams now with veteran quarterbacks trying to steady these new look offenses. Well, good morning and welcome into Early Birds. we got the big map out here to show you. <laughs> it's transcontinental today. Shock back in Atlanta. I'm here in Seattle. And DJ, one thing's for sure, whatever time zone you're in, nobody wants to start 0-3. No doubt about it. 0-3 is not where you want to be. And especially early in the season, it kind of is a downer for your team. So try to get a win here early. but get the momentum, the confidence going so that hey, you can finish this season and start going in the right direction, not 0-3. Yeah, Shock, you know, it's a breezy day out here in Seattle, but what's that odor? 
It smells like film room. We'll see you over there <laughs> in just a few. You like that one? I do, I do. That was good. See you there in just a few <laughs> minutes. But first, the Falcons D line right now is off to a pretty uh, not so bad start to the season. Just look at the numbers. Right now, the team is in the middle of the pack in the NFL in both sacks and rushing yards allowed. Nothing too much to brag about, but an improvement in both areas on last season. One reason is second year player Taquan Graham. We spoke one on one with TQ out here in Seattle, and as much as he's loved getting his engine going with this season, there's one other thing he loves going fast in as much as he does love getting to the quarterback, and that's with cars. Here's our one on one interview starting with a little auto talk. Probably my older brother, you know, he just had got, you know, this is a Dodge Charger RT, you know, the 5.7 Hemi. Nice. And, you know, it got me interested in cars, and now I had a Hellcat, now I got a Trackhawk, I sold my Hellcat. <laughs> definitely, definitely like the speed a little bit. So are you following it, or how do you kind of like geek out about it? Um, you know how Dodge just came out with, you know, their new models of electric vehicles. I, I seen that, I kind of watched it. When you hit a big, get that Grady contract one day, what is that dream car on the ultimate down? the line bucket list I necessarily don't even have a dream car okay. right now because in that dream contract I definitely would say buying you know my brother his dream car I like it. and buying my mom her dream car that's definitely something I look forward to one day the defensive line has shown some horsepower to start the season how do you look at how your group has done through the first two games uh, I feel like we played pretty solid I feel like we definitely got to the QB a few times and for sure gotten QB hits and pressures and all the other stuff we've heard from Grady we've heard from coach Pease they've, they've named you as a guy that they're looking Looking to take a big step forward this year. Were there anything specifically you changed training or eating, like cut out any foods, add some kind of different, you know, Pilates, something like that? Uh, definitely did a little bit of Pilates. Okay. Always got throwing yoga in there. And stop eating Whataburger, man. Oh, yeah. how's that been? I mean, it was hard, but you know, <laughs> in Atlanta, there's no Whataburger, so I'm pretty good on that. Two real close games. How do you wrap your head around that, right? Both those games, you had such good stretches, but ultimately didn't get the finish. How do you look at those games? Um, honestly, uh, breaking it down simple, two of them are in the L column, but I feel like we can learn from both of those losses. And there's good and bad to everything in life, you know what I mean? I feel like just looking at our team, we definitely have the team that we thought we did. And looking ahead to the Seahawks, it's a different quarterback under center for the first time and it seems like forever. What stands out when you pop in the Seattle tape? I feel like they're definitely going to try to establish the run game. Penny and uh, you know, Kenneth Walker, I feel like they're definitely like you know two great backs and they're young uh, and they definitely may, may lean on them uh, this upcoming game. It's time to get some game intel from Shock. You're invited into the film room. So cut the lights and let's get started. All the conversation this week has been about, can we get Kyle Pitts to football? Where is Kyle Pitts? Why is he not involved in the offense? Well, I'm going to show you why he is exactly where he should be and is involved in his offense. Now, of course, we're going to give him the football. Everybody wants to do that. That's going to happen. But this is the touchdown here by Drake London that I'm going to show you. And it's an interesting play that happened here. And it's because of number eight. It's because of Kyle Pitts that Drake London is able to get his first career touchdown. Let's talk about what happens on this particular play here from the Falcons. That's a great design by Arthur Smith. Now, the most important thing is Kyle Pitts. He comes out here and he attacks this defensive back, and then he gets vertical. He has him in man coverage. This safety over the top has Kyle Pitts in man coverage. Now, this is going to be just a one-step slant by Drake. So he's going to take one step, and he's going to attack it right now. But the reason that this works so good is because Kyle goes at this defensive back, and when he goes at him, it forces this guy to go over the top, or he has to go underneath. He has to make that decision. So I'm going to let it run. I'm going to show you exactly what he does. At the snap, he goes at him. Now you see the way he goes at him here. Now this defensive back is at a disadvantage already. He has to go over the top here or underneath. But because he's behind him, now he already has him beat and he beats him to the front of this uh, touchdown here. And it's a nice job here of coming across and it's an easy touchdown for Drake London. This all came about because Kyle Pitts ran his route correctly and Drake London was able to get under him. And now you get the first career touchdown. And how about this, his quarterback. Get him in the football late, and you can see him say thank you. This is what it's all about, creating those memories. But Kyle Pitts is the big reason why Drake London got his first career touchdown. Thanks, Shock. I know Falcons fans begging for some more targets, but Pitts doing more than meets the eye. Still to come, big college football Saturday, including the question of how hot is the coaching seat getting down on the flats. Plus, just extend my arms out in front of me and squeeze the ball. 
Hey, we were just talking about Kyle Pitts, and he's talking about catching tough passes with defenders closing in. We'll explore how he does it coming up next in Going Deep. fans score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you Early Birds is presented by Mercedes-Benz the best or nothing and brought to you by Georgia Lottery today could be the day by Truist committed to a better future and by Home Depot how doers get more done The Sky Fox drone flew over Lake Washington. This is right next to Husky Stadium where the Falcons practice all week. Justin, we'll be back with more from Seattle in just a minute. Welcome back to Early Birds. It's time to switch gears and talk a little college ball. Brought to you by Truist. BB&T and SunTrust are now Truist. And welcome back to Early Birds. I'm Miles Garrett here with DJ to talk a little college ball shock. Your dogs, huge matchup today against yep. Kent State. No disrespect against them. <laughs> Barring something absolutely miraculous or disastrous, if you're a dogs fan, yeah. they're going to stay undefeated today, right? Yeah, I think they will. This is a game that you expect the dogs to handle their business and come out on top of it and be a team that continues to play the level that they've been playing. Now, it's fun to watch this team, and it's been interesting to see what they can do, but I think they come out on top. Now, I've been around this team. I've been around them for a year, year and a half now. I'd love for you to give me your take. Do you think this team is better than it was last year, if possible. Now, I think it's a really interesting question you bring it up because going into this season, I thought there was no way that Georgia could repeat the success yeah. they had with all the losses you see on defense. Right. Jordan Davis, N'Kobe Dean, all these guys. It's kind of weird to, to figure out that they are able to repeat that production almost to a better degree. Yeah. You have Stetson Bennett playing like a Heisman candidate. I don't think anyone <laughs> saw that coming. Yeah. People thought that Stetson Bennett might not even be quarterback one. He's a sure. walk-on beating out all these guys, but here he is throwing to Brock Bowers that tight end room looks like it's pretty much unstoppable at this point yeah. Darnell Washington all those guys Oof. they're doing all of this without Eric Gilbert even talent all over the board it's crazy so in that regard they do look better it looks like the Todd Munkin offense has taken that next step yeah. for the dogs and they might be on their way for another national championship I'm with you man this could be an interesting season and they could put up better numbers than they did last year but I think a more pressing topic appears to be on a lot of minds of the people around here in the 404 area with the guys down on the plane with the yellow jackets is Jeff Collins on the proverbial hot seat after losing 42 to nothing old miss I think a more telling discussion about this whole Jeff Collins situation is the fact that their last four FBS opponents we're right. not going to count Western Carolina because that was an <laughs> FCS opponent right. but their last four FBS opponents Georgia Tech has gone 183 and 10 oh wow that can't be acceptable if no. you're a Georgia Tech fan losing in that fashion to those opponents it's okay if you lose yeah. this was going to be a rebuilding program from the start yeah. moving from the triple option to a more pro style offense but now you're getting to the point where Georgia Georgia State and Georgia Southern are blowing past you now. Yeah. This was never a reality for Georgia Tech football. So yeah. in that regard, you have to ask some questions. Well, let's be real. I mean, this is a program that he's done a great job of marketing, done a great job of talking about the Waffle House and the 404. We talked about that. But now it's time to produce. You have to go out and you have to win ball games. And I think that's what matters the most is you got to go out and you got to try to win these ball games against some quality opponents in this. And it's going to be it's going to be fun. But appreciate you joining, man. Love your insight, Miles. And uh, uh, hopefully we can get you back on here, man. Let's Talk some more college football. <laughs> All right, well, it's been pretty quiet so far, but everyone knows it's only a matter of time before the unicorn breaks out this season. We're talking, of course, about Kyle Pitts and how he makes those tough catches in traffic. He shows us how in this week's Going Deep. Just extend my arms out in front of me and squeeze the ball. How tough is that? How satisfying is that when there is a guy who's got good coverage making the catch? It's just something you, you do during the week and you get those contested catches during the week and you try and you know get that repetition to try and make your body just acquainted to it so that it's, it's easy in the game. How do you practice that? I mean, because it's not like guys are constantly draped all over you at practice. Most, a lot of time you're open. I mean, are there drills for that? Uh, there's different drills you may on a jug machine just have somebody push you or okay. pull an arm down, different things like that. No, a lot of Falcons fans want to see more of that from Kyle Pitts this week. We've got more to come here on Early Birds. There were some Falcons players earlier this week who thought they were just gonna be shaking hands and signing autographs. They did not know 
there would be machine guns and hand grenades in their future. That story, you're going to want to see it next on Early Birds. You're watching Early Birds, presented by Mercedes-Benz, on your official home for Falcons football, Fox 5 Atlanta. Great view of the Seattle skyline from the Sky Fox drone. You got the Space Needle in there. We are in the Queen Anne neighborhood, a little north of downtown Seattle. And shock, Falcons players only got one full day off here in Seattle. I don't know, if it was me, I would have slept in, gone to Pike Place. What about you? I'm in the room. I'm chilling. I'm finding something to watch on TV. <laughs> I, I may go see a little sightseeing or something every now and then, but I'm, I'm enjoying my little relaxation time, I'll be honest. I hear you, DJ, but <laughs> one group of Falcons players did something about as different as you can get. Take a look. Hi. 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 Do you solemnly swear, Do you solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. On board a C-17 transport aircraft, Atlanta Falcons and Seattle Seahawks players watched as new service members took their oath of enlistment, starting their military careers and starting the Football Stars Tour of Joint Base Lewis McCord. Please join me in a round of applause for our newest enlisted. It's pretty cool, man. Hey, this stuff is heavy. Yeah, I can see it. Running back Avery Williams and his teammates dove right in or should I say climbed right in like to this Apache helicopter. Wow this is cool. I'm glad it's off. <laughs> hey this is too cool. <laughs> Let me get a selfie in here. The base is about an hour south of Seattle where the Falcons are spending the week before facing the Seahawks and serves multiple branches of the military, mostly Army and Air Force. So I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I've been a Falcons fan since I was six. This is a great experience. I got chills and everything running down. It really does boost everybody's morale here. And them being able to come see what we do, us being able to get to talk to them. Part of what I love about being in the military. Autographs, photos, a stop for some camouflage face paint. If it looks cool, you're doing it wrong. Then a ride in striker armed vehicles to the interactive part of the day. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> NFL players are used to coming under fire from coaches and critics in the media, but not like this. Get down, prep your grenade. Look, make sure your target's still there. Hop up and throw. Oh! What's going to be your big takeaway from this experience? I mean, just to be grateful. You know, these people, you know, like us, have a team atmosphere, but, you know, they're putting their lives on the line. Just getting a chance to be hands-on with stuff like this, it was awesome, man. I'm definitely thankful for them, and, you know, it's an honor to have them guys on our side. Falcons players we spoke to said they didn't know what they're in for on the trip to Joint Base Lewis McCord, and they left the base with quite a few new experiences and a new appreciation for our country's military. Yeah, that was such a fun day. And I'll tell you what, we met a lot of Falcons fans on the base, especially among the Army service members, the men and women, because many of them trained at Fort Benning in Columbus, Georgia. A lot of Falcons fans. More to come from Seattle. More Early Birds after the break. Early Birds has been presented to you by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Welcome back to Early Birds from a beautiful, breezy day in Seattle. Well, the Falcons are hoping that none of their players bring an injury back with them when they travel to the East Coast tomorrow night. If someone does get hurt, there's a very specific process in place from the moment the player hits the turf. Falcons team doctor, Dr. Kyle Hammond, takes you behind the scenes in this week's Emory Road to Recovery. If somebody gets hurt, we have to come off the field. Um, you know, sometimes it's in a cart. Uh, if it's a little more substantial injury or sometimes we can walk off the field, there's going to be usually myself or and or another one of the physicians helping me uh, and then usually at least one of our training staff. And then, you know, coming back here, whether we need to go to the x-ray machine or whether we can go straight for an evaluation will be determined based off of the type of the injury uh, that there is. And then at that point in time, we kind of just take our time and make sure we're doing a nice, safe, methodical evaluation to evaluate the player and the athlete and get them, you know, to the point of seeing if it's an injury that's something we can try to manage, treat, and reassess, and then go back out and play, or if it's not safe. Well, Shock, I'm looking forward to being back in the same state as you next week. This has been a fun transcontinental edition. Falcons looking forward to hopefully their first win of the season. What's the matchup you're watching? Short and sweet. AJ Terrell locked down DK Metcalf. Big ask there for AJ Terrell. Team's been going after him. He'll get an opportunity for sure tomorrow. All right, for DJ Shockley in Atlanta, I'm Justin Felder in Seattle. Thanks for joining us here on Early Birds. See you back here next week. Have a good rest of your day and a great weekend.